Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Charles F. Rosene. Welcome, Charles. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, so glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and I love the flag behind you. I actually just got a Mini Cooper, and the the roof of it is the British flag. I love it. Yeah, I know. So much of what I do is British Invasion and Beatles. And yeah, so that's a nice backdrop for me. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so yeah, that's why you're here. I, we're going to talk the Beatles. And I grew up, my dad and mom love the Beatles, listen to it. I know all of it. I know all of it. Have you met any of them? I or met- Did uh, you? <laughs> all, all but John, actually. is a picture of me with Paul McCartney uh, from a couple of years back. Okay, he Yeah. Got to meet him several times. Um, uh, we, uh, we, in producing Beatles conventions for this many years and Beatle festivals and bringing people to England on Beatle tours for almost four decades, um, I, I got a lot of, you know, opportunities to be in the presence of the guys. Um, the, the, Paul and, and Ringo, especially, George was just completely by amazing coincidence um we brought a tour group a, a tour group out to see Harrison perform in Japan mm. um before we lost George he did three concerts with Eric Clapton's band and when we were there uh yeah just you know as circumstance would have it we were in the same airport as he was going home wow so we were checking at you know at the at the desk he was walking by. We all wound up in the same executive lounge. So that was one of those, you know, miracles that you never yeah, know. Yeah, divine. <laughs> meant to be. Yeah. So if you had to pick, which one do you think is the most talented or was the most talented? Uh, well, I would. Paul McCartney, of course. Um, you know, everyone, they were so talented in their own right. And to have four amazing individuals come from the same area to actually meet and play together, you know, all the stars align so oh perfectly. Oh my gosh! Once, yeah. once not in a lifetime, but once ever, and um, I just I think Paul just a little more than the rest in so many fields, writing and performing and producing and being, you know, just uh, just one of one of a one of an all time kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thankfully got to see him in concert because I don't know if he's going to come here again, but. It was a really good concert and he told stories in between and it was, he was just so down to earth and his stories, he told a story. I won't get, just tell the whole story, but he told a story about how him and John Lennon were shopping for guitars, window shopping, and they were broke. You know, they were just starving artists and they were looking at guitars through the windows and stuff. And then a cab pulled up. And so they were going to hop in the cab and it was Mick Jagger. And I can't remember who else he, if it was somebody else from the Rolling Stones or who in the car. And it sounded almost like a joke, like <laughs> John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Mick Jagger are in a cab, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, are you kidding me right now? Like he, the way he said it just made it seem like it's just normal everyday stuff. I'm like, no. you guys are legends. So it was really cool to hear his stories and his background and just what a life, what a beyond, life they beyond, led. Beyond legend. legend is just, you know, scraping the surface of the accomplishments and the, uh, the amazing art and, and music and, and joy that he's brought. And for someone in that kind of a godlike status, he's yeah. Down to earth and his conscious, what three hours of music and fun. And it just, yes. Wow. Yeah. It was amazing. So have you seen them all in concert, like lots of times or how, let's go back. Yeah. What got you into this? What, are, what got you to be a beyond fan status? So I was this little pitcher growing up in the Bronx and, you know, uh, we watched Ed Sullivan, I guess, as a kid, because um, there was this mouse at the end who was called Topo Gijo. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, he would say, uh, kiss me good night Eddie and that made my night I could go to sleep <laughs> the rest of my week was fine you know I had the Ed Sullivan show but mm. one amazing night is is you know one of my first memories in life was seeing the Beatles on February 7th 1964 and uh, my life was changed you know that was it from then on you know I loved everything about them try to collect everything about them never knowing that years later um 
they would be such a part of my life in in the things that I do as far as I'm a you know I'm a party DJ I'm, I, I I entertain at weddings and bar mitzvahs and school dances and you name it um, probably because I wasn't able to play an instrument but had to channel my musicals you know w uh, wanting yeah so, um, produce the Beatles convention since the late seventies package the tours to Liverpool for Beatle fans since the 80s, published a magazine on the Beatles for 20 years. And then eventually, you know, when I said uh, I would never do a book and I'd never write a book and every book's been written, <laughs> then COVID hits and I have nothing to do. So I, <laughs> my second act in life is starting, is, you know, becoming an author. And uh, the third book I put out was a Beatles book after all my Beatle people were saying, how dare you put out books and it not be a Beatles book. Uh, and it very well received and very unique because I said I would I couldn't put out a Beatle book because it's all been done. And then right. it hit me. Well, it hasn't all been done. There was never a book where 64 celebrities gave their top 10 favorite Beatles lists, Beatles songs, Beatles themes, Beatles memories, whatever. And uh, just so proud of that book. But yeah, I'd never thought watching them on TV and, and you know, you know, googling, go goggling, oogling, like everyone <laughs> else did at that age. You're far too young to remember this, but maybe you've seen it on DVD or video or, or, or you know, somehow since. It just impacted the world like nothing else. And, you know, if you were a girl, maybe you wanted to, I don't know what, uh, marry a beetle, sleep with a beetle. <laughs> if you were a guy, you wanted to be a beetle. You wanted right, to. Right, right. So, so many people became musicians, grew their hair out, learned how to play guitar. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that was that was the moment. That was the change. Yeah, it was a phenomenon. I mean, in, in the biggest way possible. And it's, yeah. their music is still relevant. I mean, you can listen to it and sing along any generation. I just love it. Love it. Um, yeah. So I love puns and your magical history tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So what do you, you do that once a year or? Once a year, just like in Memphis, they have Elvis week once a year in Liverpool, they have Beatle week and the whole city take, I mean, it's Beatles on every corner, every pub. When every is it? It's the last two weeks of August. Okay. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but I just wanted yeah, to know yeah, that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, what we do is a 10-day tour. So we'll uh, go to London for three days. We'll jump on our luxury coach and stop in Henley, which is a quaint British village. And it's where George Harrison lived and loved, and it was his home. Um, but it gives our travelers... They're going from London to Liverpool, which are huge, you know, cities, metropolitan cities. Mm -hmm. They get to see what it's like around the British countryside and a little village. So we do that. We go London, Henley, and then Liverpool for a whole week of nonstop Beatle concerts, Beatle conventions, Beatle festivals, touring, going into their homes, going to their schools, the places they played, the wow. cafes, um, all the stuff you heard about uh, in, in their songs. The stuff that you've seen in postcards and in books, we actually bring it to life. Penny Lane, Strawberry Field, um, Abbey Road. It's all part of the tour. And people go, I mean, they can go anytime. They can go all year round. But to go with fellow fans, to get into places they might not be able to get into otherwise, it's the ultimate going during Beatle Week with like like a group like mine. And we've been doing it for many years very successfully. So is it the same people? Do the same people come all the time? Or do you always have new, new, new all the time? Uh, so 95% are new. Oh, because okay. Many people are, you know, this is my bucket list. And someday they retire. Someday they have enough money. Someday they can take the vacation. Whatever those reasons are, um, they finally get to it. But but the other 5%, and it's probably more than that, it's probably 10%, um, will return because they've had such a good time. Mm -hmm. And they wait five years and they know, oh, wow, a new place, a new museum opened. Oh, my God, I got to go. Is give them a new new incentive and new reason to actually travel again and go to the, some of the same places. But every year there's something, a new something or other in Liverpool, a sightseeing event, a new uh, display at a museum or a new concert, or like for this year, we're going to a place called New Brighton as part of our Liverpool tour. Why New Brighton? Because there was a, something called the Tower Ballroom there. And aside from the Cavern Club, the Beatles played there more than any other place in the UK. Well, oh, wow. it's 
no longer there, but the seaside community is still there and all the place. So we're going to follow in the footsteps of the Beatles to this village not far from Liverpool, um, where uh, the Beatles played so many times and had so many great concerts and loved it so much. But we just never, um, you know, had a chance to fit it in on any past tours. Another tour, we might go to one of their schools where they put out a whole event where they have bands play. And this was a way to get into a school that is an actual working school. So you can't just get in there as tourists, but they had an event. So every year there's that something else that makes it special that gives people who have gone before reasons to come again. Yeah. So do you have dual citizenship? So it's easy for you to go back and forth? I should, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there, what, 50, 60 times? No, a passport's good enough. <laughs> really? Oh, I think it'd be kind of a cool place to be able to go often. Like, and I, never thought of I think I have to have a residence. Oh, and I think, sure. and I think I have to spend X amount of time there. And for a while I was, because I was doing the Beatles tour. Then if McCartney would tour Liverpool, we would do a tour for that. And then I was doing ghost tours, believe it or not, to England. So there was a few years there where I was probably spending a month or two over uh, over in the UK. Gosh, that's so cool. Okay, so let's go back to your book. How, what? How did you come up with the idea of that? To And then did you have a hard time getting celebrities to give their input? A great two-parter. So <laughs> I, it came about because... During COVID, I mentioned that I right. all the things I do, I couldn't do. I couldn't DJ. I couldn't do tours. Right. I couldn't do conventions. Couldn't do festivals. I'm home alone uh, with my family. We're quarantining and isolating like the rest of the world. We're learning. I'm teaching the kids, you know, the Beach Boys and the Four Seasons and Motown and stuff besides the Beatles and the Monkees. Um, and <laughs> we're watching horror movies because that's my other passion. Um, and I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And I remember that Years ago, I used to do an online newsletter called National Horror Happenings. Nothing to do with the Beatles, but right. my, my other passion, the monster stuff. And um, I would get top 10 lists from celebrities because I'm sort of this quasi, I'm not going to say entertainer, but I'm on, you know, in the field somewhat. Yeah. And so I come across a lot of, you know, entertainers and become a lot of fr friends with a lot of these people, especially musicians. And I would reach out to them and say, hey, can you give me a top 10 horror list. And they love the idea of that because if you're, you know, in a rock and roll band, your interviews are usually, all right, well, how did you get the G chord on this? Or what are your favorite heavy metal songs? Or who are your inspirations? Here they were being asked about monster movies. They love it. <laughs> so I, without knowing it, I had accumulated like 70, 80, uh, these top 10 lists that were just in the database. Mm -hmm. And I'd forgotten about them. So I was on the treadmill during COVID with nothing to do. And I went, <laughs> wait a second, I got this list. If I could get 20 or 30 more of these, you know, top 10 lists, I think I can put out a book. This is the guy who said he would never put out a book. <laughs> and um, it was so easy, Dawn, to get those 20 or 30 lists because everyone else was home isolating just like I was. They had nothing yeah. to do. This wasn't That's true. Hard. It was a pleasure. So they had something to think of and work on for a day or two. Um, they weren't out gigging if they were musicians. They weren't out doing shows if they were acting. You know, they weren't athletes. They weren't at their sport. So 20 or 30 came like that. It was so easy. And I finished that book, the book of top 10 horror lists, relatively quickly. Now, mind you, I'd had those lists for 10, 12 years. Yeah, right. So, so in essence, the book was, you know, 10, 12 years in the making. But the actual writing their bios, finding a great picture, editing it, and then, um, you know, adding uh, maybe a photo of the movie or whatever it was that was connected it came very quickly. And the book came out and it was such a great process and was so well received and thank goodness sold so well that I was, wow, I love this. I can put out another book. Yeah. Put out a go book of ghost stories, the true ghost stories of Connecticut, which is the probably the only not pop culture book and even though the horror list book had like nine beetle chapters eight monkey chapters it had a lot of rock and roll a lot of music yeah. i was still getting hey charles how dare you not put out a beatles book <laughs> I, was saying, I was saying well it's all been done and then people were like smacking me in the face oh yeah no one's ever done like the horror book you did 
you can do a Beatles top 10 version of the Yeah, right. You're absolutely right. Blah, of course I could. And uh, it was a little tougher because people were now back to their gigs. You know, the actors were acting, the rock stars were mm -hmm. rocking. Uh, so what I had to do is go back to the well, to a lot of the people who were friends who I knew would yeah. give me lists. And they say, hey, you think of anyone else? And they'd give me a phone number or an email. And it took another few years or so, but um, thus became the book of top 10 Beatles list with the widest variety of, you know, celebrities. It, with the with the horror list book, there were a hundred celebrities. Wow. With this, with this one, I thought there was one magic number that I had to stop at. And of course that was 64 <laughs> top list because of the song when I'm 64. Right, because right. The, you know, hit America yes. in 1964. And because I think if I waited to get those other 36, it would have taken me another few years. And I didn't want to wait that long. Yeah, well, kudos to you because writing a book is no joke. I've never done it. I just know of people who have. And it's a lot. It's like you said, editing and doing the pictures and you want it to be perfect. It's your you it's your name out there and you want to give absolutely. credit to the Beatles. Right, you don't want to do a schlock job. You want to make sure that, it's uh, right, you know, beautiful grammatically. And I did right. have an, an editor who did a great job. Um, but you also want to make sure it looks good so that it's a collectible, that someone will want to keep it and, and treasure it so that, you know, when, when I put out anything I do, whether it's a tour or a convention or now a book, I want it to be that book that I would love, that I would want to read, that, you know, that I finish it and say, wow, that was fun. That was, they did a good job with it. Um, and I think I succeeded because one third of the book are people connected to the Beatles world, okay. relatives, people who toured with them, people recorded with them, Beatle people. Yeah. The, the other third, rock and rollers, you know, just general rock stars and people, you know, uh, Billy, Billy Joel's drummer, um, Alice Cooper's guitarist, um, the, the, the lead, the lead guitarist from the cars, a lot of people in the music world. And then the other third was just people who, in general who were known, but not necessarily connected with the Beatles or with rock and Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. <laughs> Go figure, I'd get a list from him and those type of Dinah Manoff, the actress from Grease and Soap. You know, yeah. those type of people, those were, those were the fun ones. Uh, Larry Thomas, the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, God. All these people love the Beatles. All of them gave me great lists. Yeah. And those help balance out the book so that it's, it's for a diehard Beatles fan. Oh, they love it. Oh but for, yeah. For a general person who loves celebrity pop culture, top 10 lists, they don't have to be diehard Beatles fans to love the book. Yeah. So how did that work? Did you come up with the top 10 category and you sent it to them or they came up with their own? It was carte blanche. I would say anything that you want to do, I know that most people I said are doing top 10 uh, songs. songs, right? but you can do top 10 solo. You can do top 10. I literally gave suggestions. And if it was people connected to the Beatles, it tended to be top 10 memories. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's Carter. cool. Yeah, Paul McCartney's half sister did um, uh, uh, places that she remembered in Liverpool that she were close to her heart. Uh, um, a journalist who toured with the Beatles, uh, his 10 favorite concerts that he saw in person that the Beatles did. But it couldn't be just the list. Or it couldn't be just like, she loves you yesterday. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. No, it yeah. had to be reasons why. Yeah, I love that. That is so cool. Because their explanations and their anecdotes and their stories behind each choice is what makes the book interesting. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's something that could go in a time capsule, you know, and then somebody could find it in 25, 30 more years and look back and say, oh, this is all the reasons why the Beatles were who they were. That's awesome. I love that. So yeah. how in the world does that? So you just happen to love the Beatles and then also horror. <laughs> <laughs> I love Halloween, but I do not like scary movies. <laughs> so I would be not good for a book, but. What... Gr growing, growing up, my I loved, until I discovered girls, my three things was baseball, <laughs> monsters, and the Beatles which, you know, came, became rock and roll in general right. and, and all that. And uh, 
it's to be able to uh, I wasn't an athlete and I wasn't a musician and I wasn't gonna you know play Dracula in any movies although I did somehow get into a lot of great films as as you know I, I am in a lot of horror movies and I've been an extra in a lot of films um but I never those were never vocations I never thought I'd ever do anything with all the things that I love but fortunately I have I've been able to somehow um turn all my life's passions into things that I do that are, I don't want to say side hustles, but, you know, contribute, yeah. contribute to me being able to put my kids through college. That's amazing. And, and you're getting to be part of all the industries that you like without being a musician and without, you know, being those exact characters, yes. but you get to be involved in the world of it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. So it's great. Cause now, like I go to, uh, they have horror conventions all over the world <laughs> and, 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 I used to attend some of them and I would go gaga if I saw, you know, Robert Englund who played Freddy Krueger. Oh, I got to get a picture of him, got to get his autograph. Well, now I'm sitting next to these people and signing copies of my book. And it's such a, it's so cool to be in that same, from going to the other side of the table. I'm, right. still, I'm still a fan first. Yeah. But able to, you know, who would have dreamt that I'd be, you know, signing my own autograph for people. Right, who, right. You know, such a great feeling. Well, and you're on the East Coast, so how, where, how far are you from Salem? Well, that's a great question because I produce the Salem Paranormal Horror Convention every every fall. Oh my gosh, my cousin is in Boston, and she wanted me to go there with her because we, again, I love Halloween. I don't know yeah. if I'd like it if it was actually scary. <laughs> well, would you go on? Do you go on? Um, do you go on roller coasters? No, I because used to. Because they're too scary that you don't yeah. like the way they feel, right? Yeah. Even though they're over in a matter of seconds, it's right. still that, right? <laughs> now, is it because they're scary or the thought of going on them scares you? What is it? I used to go on them all the time. And I think the older that I got, I started yeah. like, what am I doing? You know, because I would actually be afraid. I'd want to jump out when I get to that top. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just the fear now what you see, you hear things, you know, yeah. you see it on the news. Sure, sure. I know too much. <laughs> the, the news is a lot scarier than any monster. Well, that movie. is true. Yeah. Although you walk out of the theater and the lights are back on and it's real life. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do love the scary stuff. I don't like like the gruesome, you know, torture, horror, you know, slasher stuff. I like suspense. I would take the sixth sense over, you know, uh, yeah, a spooky. Play. I like spooky. I like mind thrillers and all that. The Salem event is very interesting because we combine the paranormal, which is of course, supernatural and mm -hmm. ghost psychics and all that with horror because um, Salem was missing that. And we'd been doing it for many years over November thinking, well, you can't get a parking space in October. There's no hotel rooms. There's nowhere to move. Right. And it made sense to an extent, but not from a marketing point of view, because there's hundreds of thousands of people in Salem during Halloween month. Right. We move the event now, uh, October 19th and 20th, which is, that's right, a week before Halloween. And so we hope to get a lot more people to attend the event, but it's the only world-class uh, horror, horror or paranormal convention in Salem proper. And we do it in a university, Salem State University, because there's a lot of parking and it's yeah. accessible. <laughs> Whereas any other part of uh, of the city, forget it. You can't get anywhere near it. Yeah. So not that, about under three hours away, but um, because we produce the Connecticut we, because I produced the Connecticut Paranormal Convention, it made sense for me to bring the, a similar show to Salem. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I just don't like the jump scare stuff. I like thriller. I like, you know, the mind stuff, but I, I plug my ears. <laughs> I watch scary stuff. I can't even open a can of biscuits without like hitting it on the counter, waiting for it to explode. <laughs> so you would hate like these ha haunted attraction, like the, the, the haunted houses where you walk in and there's jump scares every second. Yeah, I don't like that. No, no. No, I don't. So I, I curated and ran a, a place like that for many years. And I would teach the actors how to scare because there's a science to the scaring and, and using diversions and distractions and all that. Oh and you know, there's a group of five not to scare the front or the back of the line. You know, there's a lot of really thought behind <laughs> all that. Um, 
And I since sold that company and now I do a haunted trolley, which actually you would enjoy because the first year it was telling ghost stories and, and you know, having the experience of an ancient trolley. And it was very cool. Last year we did a murder mystery on board. Where That'd be fun. And that was right. And no jump scares and <laughs> no reason why parents can't bring kids. So that's that's what we've been doing the past few years. Yeah. So what's your favorite Beatles song? Oh my gosh. I, how can I answer that? I know you have to. <laughs> so, uh, it's funny because everyone I would ask that would say, I can't answer it. And then they of course have to, uh, and they yeah. say, oh, there are too many, Yeah, but it, it's changed. It's changed for years and years. It was, she loves you, uh, as a kid growing up. And then I, I always said, if I ever get married, it'll be, um, uh, here, there and everywhere. And I did finally get married late in life and it was my wedding song, but I got to tell you over the past decade or so, it's been while my guitar gently weeps. Yeah. That's a great one. Harrison song. And it's for some reason that's so special and so magical and it doesn't get old or tired as much as I love the Beatles catalog and I put on a song it sounds as fresh to me as it did you know years ago there's some that I say oh okay I can't listen to this now I've heard it too many times yeah there's, there's a few of those while my guitar gently weeps sounds new to me every single time yeah that it is it's a beautiful song and I, there's a live version that I have on my Spotify account and I always listen to it because it's I don't know it's just raw or it's raw <laughs> It's just fresh or sounding. Love, it's yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. But there's so many good ones. And I love John Lennon's solo stuff. I loved Wings. Like there's just so so much talent. George Harrison. They they were just so talented all across the board. It was such a cool thing. And I think it's awesome that you took it as more of just being a fan and you just turned it into your life passion. That's well, awesome. Yeah. You're not getting away with asking me that and me not asking you. <laughs> I never answer me. my own question. You have to tell me what's your favorite Beatles song. Oh gosh. Like for, like you said, for me, it changes. I really like the, the Blackbird. I think that's a really pretty song. Yeah. Um, and then after seeing Paul McCartney in concert, he explained the song and it really changed it for me. But um, yeah. Today, I'll just say Blackbird. Oh, Blackbird? Right, cool. <laughs> but well, they're all great. What we have to do is look in the book and see what other celebrities pick Blackbird. Oh, there you go. Let's go. It's an alpha go. It's one of the nice things about the book. It's an alpha order at the end with list, list every song that was mentioned, every album that was mentioned, every whatever, I and, love which, and which celebrity picked it. And is it on Amazon? It is. It's on Amazon and uh, it's you can get it actually from the website Book of Top 10, uh, Beatleslist.com, the number 10, not the T-E-N, Book okay. of, if they want a signed copy, the website's a better place. If they just want to get it, would not pay shipping and all that. Amazon, of course, is the best right, place. So right, right. Signed looking, by who? By you? Well, not signed by you. <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't know if it was like it had the beatles signatures in it i didn't know uh, it signed, uh, it. signed by <laughs> signed by this this lowly author yeah signed by the author <laughs> people love getting signed books by the authors you know that's why uh you know these uh library i do so many library appearances uh, oh that's cool really 30 or 40 a year and i'll go to a library i'll do a presentation on the beatles show some rare video once in a while, I'll have like a performer come in and do sing-alongs. And then I sit at the table. And I say, okay, people, come on. I'll sign books for you. Yeah. And people enjoy that. And I do. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm getting a book from an author, I want it signed. Black, yeah. Blackbird. Um, some of the people who liked it, and there were a lot. Um, Jeffrey Allen Ross, formerly of Badfinger and currently the music director of Peter Asher. Mark Stein, who was the lead singer of Vanilla Fudge, famous rock band. Jerry Yester from uh, The Association and The Love and Spoonful. And Don Daneman, a lot of these you wouldn't know their names, but he was the lead singer of The Circle, uh, who had a bunch of hits in the 60s and actually opened for the Beatles. So oh, you have wow. A dozen people pick that song as their favorite. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Um, I just did a podcast a couple of weeks ago with Felix Cavallari, who was oh, a great guy. Oh my gosh. The nicest guy ever. And yes. he was God who, Oh, I'm going to kick myself for this. He, um, had to help open, um, in a band 
for the keyboard and mm -hmm. they were opening for the Beatles. And he told me that I was like, you were so lucky. That is so awesome. It wasn't, was it the love and spoonful? I'm not sure, but I, I do know. I think it was. His bigger biggest Beatles connection was um, he was managed by Sid Bernstein, who was the manager of the beat uh, who brought the Beatles to America. He he put them in Shea Stadium. He um, he did the Carnegie Hall concert. Sid Bernstein was a wonderful guy, dear friend. He passed. And um, it, that's one of the sad things about the book. It's it's melancholy because. I had so many Beatle friends who had I thought of doing this book years ago could have included in the book. And he comes to mind. But uh, Sid, when the Beatles played uh, at, at Shea, um, put on the scoreboard, the Rascals are coming. Because oh. that was his next band. Right, right, right. That was great marketing. But the Beatles did not like that at all. <laughs> like, it was one of those, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? Um, Felix... Uh, was touring with Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees. They were doing concerts together. And I interviewed him because I have a radio show uh, that's 24-7 24, 24 Monkees, believe it or not. It's called Monkey Mania Radio. Okay. On live365.com. And uh, every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, I pre-record um, an interview with a rock star, someone who's a Monkees fan, whatever, a celebrity. And I have a blast with that. Felix came on and was one of the nicest. So nice. And I told him about my books and he goes, I'll give you lists. I would love to. I love horror movies and Beatles movies. And then I could not reach him again. <laughs> 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 but he seemed so sincere at the time and he gave oh him a yeah so <laughs> nice well you could probably do a part two yeah and and just ask those questions <laughs> yeah um yeah so i know you did one with the turtles too do you have another book in you do you have another group that you would love to do a book about yeah yeah so the, as you mentioned the current book which we're promoting heavily. I have a co-author on that, um, Mark Arnold. It's called Not Just Happy Together, The Turtles from A to Z, AM oh. Radio. And it's ridiculous. It's almost 500 pages. It's hardbound. I mean, you can knock someone out with it. It's a, <laughs> it's a real deal. It was put out by Genius Music Books, Genius Publishing. And, um, you know, that's that's a very professional outfit. And so our goal with that book is to be the definitive Turtles book. And the Turtles are one of the most underrated, underappreciated bands of all time. You know, so many great hits and not just happy together. Right, the, right. You know. And um, long time goal, long term goal is to get them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay. And I really hope that this book will be one of the, you know, the things that. Catalyst. Happen. Catalyst, thank you. Yes, I'm going to have to use that word in the future. Uh, one of the catalysts to make that happen. I have a monkey's book coming okay. uh, in a year or so. And then um, I have a really weird Beatles concept that uh, I haven't, I don't want to announce because I don't want it to get stolen. But <laughs> I don't uh, blame you. Yeah, you got to keep that on the down low. Very, very unique. And it'll appeal to two different segments of the world. And that. Uh, if if this is played when the book comes out, people will understand what I meant by play by saying two segments of the world. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead and promote yourself and I'll make sure that everything that you say is in the show notes. So for people that are just listening and can't write things down or whatever, it'll all be in the show notes, but go ahead and promote yourself. So I think in order of what how we discussed the magical history tour, that little clever pun is uh, if people want to come with me to London and Liverpool, it's www.liverpooltours.com. Very simple, liverpooltours.com. Uh, the book is the book of top 10 Beatles lists, and it's available on Amazon or from the website book of top 10 the number 10 beatleslists.com if they're monster fans and they'd like to get the co compendium to that the the companion piece book of top 10 horrorlists.com and the turtles book uh is also available all of them are available on amazon um but the B the turtles one is called uh, not just happy together the turtles from a to z and it's available from www.notjusthappytogether.com. But if anyone looks for my last name, they could find all those books on Amazon. The last name is Rosene, R-O-S-E-N-A-Y, as an author 
then all those things will come up. And if you go to the IMDb movie database and you put in that same last name, Rosna, you'll see all the silly movies and other things that I've been in through the years. Gosh, what a life. What an exciting thing you are. You're living life. I think it's amazing. What's great, Dawn, is I do things that bring not just me joy, but a lot of people joy. Right. And I, very blessed that way that you know i'm having fun in my life doing all the stuff i love but it's also making other people have fun with it as yeah well. i love it thank you so much for taking the time to be on my podcast i really appreciate it, it was just a joy to meet you and i love all of your ideas totally going to get that book or maybe more than one but hand them out as gifts so but yeah thank you so much and i will be in touch looking forward thank you again all right bye-bye